This demonstration um, is a result of some conversation we had at the last uh, uh, office hours. And it just seemed appropriate for me to give you a demonstration of how to build a parametric uh, model uh, in Magic Draw because there's some subtleties about how to do this um, efficiently. And <clears throat> I'm sure you can all suss it out, kind of like I did. But um, what I'm doing here is I'm building on top of the uh, item flow model that I had um, shown you previously in a YouTube video. This time I'm going to specifically work on showing you how to build a parametric model in a way that, that makes sense. Okay, So this is a very simple um, um, a model that is really of an of a automotive kind of domain. You can see we have this uh, automotive um, um, domain BDD here, show, kind of showing the, uh, the components that make up an automotive domain. We've got uh, a car, chassis, drivetrain, engine, etc. So here's what I really want to do at this point. I want to be able to, I'm going to create a new um, um, block definition diagram. And what I want to do with that is um, I want to basically show that it, uh, the hierarchy uh, of the car. And um, what I want to do here, basically, I'll say that the car is built from, let's just say, the chassis, um, the drivetrain, and the engine. Now, you could argue if this is correct or not. I'm not really going to press the point, but it's just as an example. And what I want to do here is, you know, make sure we represent these as being uh, um, composition relationship. So a car is built from a chassis, a drivetrain, and an engine. Okay. Um, when you do this, uh, uh, the way that my uh, magic draw is defaulting is it automatically gives part names or role names um, that happen to be the same as the block name except they're lowercase. Now that's consistent with what uh, I had um, mentioned to you previously as a good practice. That way, just by looking at the name, if it's all lowercase, you can tell it's a property or a part. If it's a uppercase, you can tell that it's a classifier or a block. Okay, now what, what I want to do with this parametric model uh, uh, problem is I want to be able to say the chassis, the drivetrain, and the engine all have mass, and I want to be able to total up um, what the total mass is for the car based on the mass of its components. So. How do I go about doing that? Well, one thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to create some value properties of mass. When I create the value properties, I'm going to need to type them with value types. And um, creating a set of value types is kind of um, a problematic. I'm going to show you a shortcut. Um, included in your Magic Draw installation is a set of libraries that include some definitions, uh, SI definitions, which are uh, quantity kinds and units, and some value types, a library of value types. So here's how you go ahead and, and make, the, make that happen. You start by importing from, import from another project, okay? At this point, you're going to need to go to the, um, the place where the installation of Magic Draw happened, the install folder, uh, and I'm going to scroll down here. And hopefully you can see on my screen as I do this, um, my Magic Draw folder. Uh, why am I not getting it? There we go. Magic Draw 18.1. Okay. And then we want to go into model libraries. And then the first thing, there are two things we need to import. The first one that we need to import is the SI definitions.mdzip. That's this one right here. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to open that. And it's going to go ahead and do its import. It's saying it's importing. And it'll do this little thing where it opens the, the, um, the project it's importing. It's going to load up some diagrams and, and um, things and then it's gonna return control of my television set to me eventually as they said on the outer limits okay 
Uh, so that's one of two. The other one I think that's a good idea to import is uh, we now have some units and dimensions. We still don't have any value types. So what I want to do, I'm going to do the same thing again. Import from another project. Okay, hopefully it'll remember where it was. It does. Okay, and now we're going to import SI value types library. SI value types library, that guy right there. Okay. And then we'll have the same little dialog thing happen. And as it does this, it's adding some packages into your model. And the little L there says it's a library. Now, I don't want to see those. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to create a new package that I'm going to call value types. Now you may already have one. All of this stuff in blue is stuff you haven't saved has, that I haven't saved yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to put all of that blue all of this new stuff. I'm going to put it in this new package. Because it's just going to be distracting. Okay. So at this point, now I want to add some some value properties. Here's the easy way to do it. Okay, I'm going to open up a specification. I'm going to start with a car. I'm going to say, does it have any properties? Yeah, it has some properties. It has the part property. So I'm going to create a new property, a new value property. Okay, I'm going to call it mass. And I'm going to type it by a value type, which we already happen to have. And um, since it's mass, I'm going to, and it's SI units, I'm going to call it kilograms. Bingo. Done. Okay. There you see values, mass, kilogram, unit, kilogram. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing with the chassis. Properties. Create. Value property. Mass. Type. Kilogram. Uh, one of my uh, clients uses doesn't use doesn't use SI units and so they had to kind of create their own uh, value property library for the kind of units they use that are SAE units uh, and that's a pain uh, it's better to use a library that you already already created in kilograms okay and then the engine uh, we want to use properties, create a new one, value property, mass, type, kilograms. Okay. Now there may be an easy way to have done all that uh, with some batch process. I don't know. Um, in any event, now we at least have mass. Uh, for each of the pieces and a mass for the total car. Now the question is, how do you total that up together? How do you sum it all together? Well, um, the you, parametric, you can use a parametric model, parametric model to show how that should happen. Then you can use a plugin like um, like uh, Melody from Intercax to actually calculate it. But at this point, what I want to do is I want to create an, a new package for, called Analysis. Where I'm going to put all the parametric information. Okay, so one of the first things I'm going to create in here is a block, and I'm going to call it a mass analysis um, context. Each each analysis that you perform really needs to have a context. Another thing I'm going to create is a constraint block, and I call it the sum, because what we really want to do is sum up the masses. Okay, so with that said, there's a couple of interesting things that we have to do with sum. First of all, um, um, we need to know that it has, let's see here, we need to add a constraint uh, with the specification. And so does it have any constraints? Um, right now it doesn't, so I'm going to create a constraint. I don't care what it's called. I'm going to add a specification, though, that says total equals P, P1 
plus P2 plus P3. And I think that's all I need to, to do. I'll close that. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do with sum, uh, this constraint block, is I'm going to see, you see, it doesn't have any parameters yet. But we know that it has one. It has a couple. There's P, I'm going to create one, and it turns out that my numbering convention is the default numbering convention. So um, there's P1. I created one already. Um, I should have gone back. We can do that again. Back to parameters. There's P1. I can create another one. P2. Back. I can create another one. And there's P3. Back. And I create another one, and I can call this one total. And I can cl close that. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm also going to create a diagram. I'm going to create a parametric diagram. Well, at this point, no, I'm not. I'm going to create before I do that, I'm going to create a block definition diagram. Okay? And I'm going to call this mass context. And I'm going to have a number of things in here. I'm going to have the block, analysis block. I'm going to have sum. And then you can see it's got, oh, it's got two constraints. And so I need to delete one and see if I can do that. There we go. And um, I also, I'm going to also want to have uh, my car. What the heck happened to my car? Oh, gosh, this is a disaster. What happened? Oh, OK, here's what happened. Structure got pulled into the value types package when it doesn't belong there. So I'm going to pull it back out. OK, there's my structure. OK, so I want the car. All right, and so here's what I want to do with this. And the car, whoop, didn't want to do that. OK, so um, the the car is providing the, 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 the values for all of its parts that we want to connect together. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to go uh, on my IBD palette here. I'm going to say, I'm not seeing it. OK. What I will do is I'm going to say that the um, mass context com is, com composes a sum. We should also, oh, I see the block definition diagram. Here it is. And we also want to use a, direct, a, a reference relationship to car, because the mass context doesn't contain the car. It just needs to get access to it. OK, this actually gives enough information that it's going to make it easier to build the parametric diagram. And let's see if it actually works. So I'm going to create a new, actually, I'm going to create it under mass analysis context. I'm going to create a new parametric diagram. Okay, and when I do that, it asks me, it knows that they, these relations exist together because already because I built them on the um, BDD. So do you want the car and do you want the sum? Yes, of course I do. Okay, and I'll go ahead and lay, out the, lay them out and there we go. So here's sum. And here's car. I'm going to make this thing a little bit bigger. OK, so we still have a problem here that in um, the sum block, in that in constraints, it has one I don't want to have. And so I'd see if I can delete this guy. I should see. That is weird. I can find him in here. There he is. OK. OK. All right. Um, so here's what I want to do. Um, I should be able to do this and expose. When I just click on this little thing, it exposes all of the properties that we already have defined. OK. Um, I'm actually going to want total on the top. And these guys a little bit further down, so I'm going to Move them if I can. Boy, it's not doing what I want it to do. That's fine. I don't care. All right. 
So now we have car, and you notice that car is uh, dashed because it's a reference property right now. Okay, um, if you recall what reference properties are. Um, so n at this point, what I want to do is start putting those value properties we've established into this context. Okay, so I'll actually start by saying, well, I'm going to take the chassis. Actually, I'm going to take the car. Know that it has a chassis. I'm going to take the part and drag it into the diagram. Okay, you notice it is not dashed. It's that's because it knows that the car has a chassis, and it actually is the part number part because it has the lowercase name. So you know it's the part. It's not the block, the drivetrain, and the engine. We want all those in here. Okay, now the interesting. Now it gets really interesting because we want to put the mass of each of these in here. So I'm going to try to do that in the most straightforward way that I can. Um, if my mouse behaves itself. <sighs> Come on, you turkey. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is from the car mass, I can just put it right in like any of the other parts. There it goes. There's the mass. That's the mass of the car. Okay, there's the chassis. The chassis has a mass as well. I'm going to put the mass there. That's the mass of the chassis, but it's not the generic chassis. It's the specific lowercase chassis that's in the car, because it might be a chassis of a truck or something that would also be a chassis. Um, drivetrain, the drivetrain of the car, not the drivetrain of the truck. The engine, likewise, the engine has a mass. So I can put that mass in there. Okay. So now I have the value properties all contextualized, and I have a, um, an, a constraint block or a constraint uh, property that exposes how I want to actually calculate the total. So what I'm going to do is use a binding connector, and I'm going to connect these together. The total is for the car. The then I have three variables that I am going to connect to these other three. If I can, there we go. Um, these other three value properties, and now we have a totally legitimate um, and perfectly valid uh, parametric diagram. This kind of this is the kind of diagram that if you're using uh, something like uh, MBS EPAC from Model Center or Intercax uh, um, um, Paramagic or runs with uh, with Magic Draw, you will actually be able to uh, compute the values. Um, if you if you set the value at one of, of one of these things, it'll compute the the remaining value. So um, th this is what I would expect uh, you to create in your um, uh, in your uh, project number three. Uh, one other thing I w quickly want to show you is that th I get this is, gets very cumbersome. This is the this is probably the most efficient way to actually build a parametric diagram put, and putting value properties on the parametric diagram. But once you have it built, there's a short shortcut I want to show you. You can actually drag these out these value properties out of the um, uh, the, the the part that they're in and show represent a shortcut in it comes up with a dot notation like you saw on the uh, pillars chart, uh, the pillars diagram, right? And so each time it asks me, does it want to represent it as a shortcut? Yes, it, uh, I do. And so that just makes the diagram a lot simpler when you do this. Represent a shortcut. Represent a shortcut. OK, and then I can just I can get rid of this whole thing now. And now I've got a very much, much simpler diagram. And that is about all I had to say about building parametric diagrams quickly and efficiently in Magic Draw. Thank you.